My name's Candice Rowe and this is Alexis Rowe. Alexis was, <laughs> she wasn't born with um, what we call it a birthmark. It was discovered when she was about six months old. It's broken. Is it broken? Okay. Yeah. Well, can you sit the bunny? Yeah, it's you... Silly worm. <laughs> and it took a long time to discover yeah, or confirm what it actually it. is. And the medical yeah, term is a congenital melanocytic nevus, aka a birthmark. And then it just started getting darker and darker and sort of growing Stop these it. black hairs. But then towards when she was about 12 months old, it was literally almost the whole part of her cheek up to the part of her eye here almost encroaching on her lip so it wasn't something she was born with it wasn't prevalent when you know she was born it started developing and growing and then we realized that it wasn't something that was pretty normal so we took her to a run-of-the-mill dermatologist and they did um sort of like a punch test which confirmed what it actually was but the dermatologist was completely stumped she had never seen anything like this before and didn't know what it was and referred us to, um, I think she'd written a letter to somebody in Texas Mama. and they then confirmed it. It's very rare, but I mean, to find Prof that knew about it, <laughs> took a bit of a negative turn. My aunt had to have cancer first before we could find out so <laughs> who he was and what he was all about. So yeah, it's been a long road, but a very good one. We've had great support and we're just happy to get it sorted out from now on. Is she in pain at all? No, in the first, um, when she woke up from the initial surgery, she was a little uncomfortable, but they gave her some good pain medication to manage it all. But otherwise, she's been an absolute trooper. I mean, so she, she's had a surgery already? Yeah, so she had the skin expander inserted. Two weeks ago, she had it inflated, and today we're doing another inflation. So they can get enough skin, because they'll cut the whole thing out and then do a skin flap over to to make it look better or we'll take a drop. So Prof Kraber basically looks at how her skin is expanding, how the nerves are reacting to having additional pressure put on them. The way he explained it to us is that there's a massive facial nerve that comes down to her mouth. And then if you put too much pressure on it, it can cause one to go lame or that nerve to die. So they're very cautious in their approach and how they're doing everything, mm. which we appreciate. And how do you feel? Going it's been it? very difficult. You struggle with the initial decision of is this what is best for your child but my husband and I made the conscious decision after we were told that it's got a 20% chance of becoming a skin cancer it was pretty much Mommy, a no-brainer no for us. Did you find me? So it was an absolute no-brainer and we consulted with Prof Krever um, and then afterwards we consulted with two other dermatologists because they thought laser might be a good option initially. They don't know what it would do to the actual cell, the laser process. So That's we opted to do surgery. I'm sure there's a lot of people that ask, you know, why would you put your child through all of this? And the question is, well, why wouldn't we? You know, people are mean. Kids are mean and they make fun of your kid. But also the fact that it has this propensity to become a melanoma, it was pretty much a no-brainer for us. Professor Frank Graeber, I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon and I would like to tell you a little bit about the condition of congenital melanocytic nevi. Uh, there can be giant uh, melanocytic nevi uh, which can cover large body surface areas. They're usually uh, dark pigmented lesions, elevated lesions with a lot of hair. Can be very severe if it comes, uh, if it or if you find it in the face. People can have a dark, pigmented skin with lots of hair in the face, uh, but we find it on any body area. This specific patient that uh, I showed you today, it's quite a big lesion and it's a difficult area because it's uh, cosmetically um, challenging to get uh, a good result, and there's a lot of important structures like facial nerve, facial muscles, um, and that makes it a difficult area to treat. Because it's a very rare condition, the families, uh, when they pick it up, they, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to go to. The problem with all congenital nevi's, from my 
experience is. It is something that starts during embryonic development. It's, it's, a, it's a thing that the children are born with, a genetic thing. And the cells <coughs> that go and sit in these uh, lesions are melanocytes, pigmented cells, and they slowly migrate from we call it the neural crest area, embryologically, to the area on the body where they manifest. And this takes many, many years. And I find that if we remove these lesions only superficially, that we just take the top layer off and we cover it with some skin graft or we resurface it or we, we, we just shave it off, we find that in the years after is a lot of new cells migrating from the depth of the subcutaneous tissue into the lesion and it repigments again. Cosmetically the best and to remove the lesion completely is to do a full thickness skin excision in that area. That's why we, we opted uh, in her for a procedure that we call excision of the lesion and reconstruction with skin expansion. So we put an expander in. Expander is a saline filled balloon that we slowly blow up intervals of about two weeks and we stretch the skin that's adjacent that's next to the lesion. I always try to excise some of the lesion when I put the expander in so I already excised about two centimeter of the lesion with the first operation and now I'm busy to expand that expander, blow it up that, that bag and that balloon. I want to gain uh, or I want to produce new skin that I can then use to cover the area and often it is a staged procedure meaning that I can't expand enough or sufficient skin in one go. We need to remove as much as we can, let it heal a little bit and sometimes put a new tissue expander in simultaneously or wait, let it settle and then at another operation put the tissue expander in and then expand again. So sometimes it is staged, especially with big lesions. We'll see how far we get in Alexa's case. With the dissection of the skin flap, I had to be extremely careful because I went from the middle of the face where the lesion is to the lateral areas and in that area where I started my dissection is where the facial nerve is actually entering the little muscles of facial expression. Fortunately, no, mus uh, no muscles and also no uh, nerves were injured with the, with the procedure, but now I have to be careful when I blow up the balloon that the pressure of that is not damaging the facial nerve as well. So with the next procedure, I will remove, when the, once the expander is fully expanded, then I will room, remove that expander and try to excise as much of the lesion that I can and let it settle.